Okay, good morning. Um, there's going to be, this post here is going to cover at least part of, if not all of, Ross Gay's poem, Ode to Buttoning and Unbuttoning My Shirt, which you have all uh, made a video on and discussed some of the power of that poem. And it's what you think its meaning is and uh, how line and image works. And for the most part, actually across the board, those were really well done. So I'm going to try and open the poem up a little bit more, talk about some places where we found confusion, which I think was a pretty common word that I heard during your videos. This idea that the poem doesn't necessarily always make sense. Um, this has a lot to do with a number of you picked out uh, this, almost all of you, uh, with the lack of punctuation inside of the poem and trying to understand how do we look at something like confusion, I'm confused by this, uh, as a statement of, of sort of personal interpretation or a value judgment, and we turn that into a critical observation that the poem utilizes confusion. I mean, that's we want to just turn that a little bit. And when we do that, we switch from a value judgment, which is something like I am confused or I don't like it, creating a value for it, an emotional value for it, into a critical observation saying that, turning into a question, why would this poem want to be confusing, right? What, what is the purpose of its confusion? And so that's going to be the goal this morning is to kind of walk our way through this one. And then the, uh, the prompt that you'll have for your reading journal will ask you to kind of follow up on some of these uh, here. With the, regarding the reading journals, um, there's maybe three I have left to get back, but thank you for sending those in. Those are going well. Um, please let me know, as always, if there's feedback you have regarding the content of the video, the content of the uh, comments on the journals. And if, yeah, just generally, if there's anything else that would be helpful, let me know and I'll make sure that I, uh, I try to do that for you. And so I'm not going to really talk much more this morning um, before I get into the poem here. But what I would say is the only other thing I want to mention is that the video that I have yet to make, but I will make this morning, uh, will be about the enumerative bibliography, which is part of your uh, overall final project. And I'll go through that one in a little bit more detail. Um, I have that assignment sheet ready, though it's not due until the end of the semester. The research that you can do can, uh, can happen almost at any point. Uh, just to keep in mind, the final enumerative bibliography will take place, or excuse me, will cover, I'm um, trying to get to the book here, uh, Max Ritvo's Four Reincarnations. So to really be able to complete that particular assignment, you're going to need uh, this book. Okay, so when you can get that ordered, that's great. But you can practice the skills required to do uh, a solid enumerative bib um, with any of the poems that we look at. So just kind of keep that in mind. We will continue to conduct research and to do response journals and some Zoom readings as we can. So remember here, we're talking about line, we're talking about image, we've been dealing with abstraction as we go forward. Um, and, and we'll try to talk about how research can be involved with all of this as well, as well as continue to think about our uh, close reading. So all of you have read this poem out loud now, which I think is a great habit to get into. Um, I will probably read the poem out loud as well because I think it's a good way to, to engage with it. Um, but as always, to scroll down just to kind of see what I see. Um, you know, very short lines inside of this poem. One long stanza, right, going through here. As a number of you pointed out, right, there's no real um, use of punctuation in here uh, all the way until the very end where there's a period. So it's meant to be one continual thought with a lot of breaks in it. So that seems important, but I don't know what that importance is until I get into the poem. So what is the deal with, with getting through the communication um, and as well without wanting to take any kind of a pause with grammar, but letting line be our pause. The lines seem to vary, but not, not a ton, where the longest one, of course, is this one. Um, this is not something to be taken lightly. Um, maybe pushing the seed into the earth is relatively close, but this is the longest, and that seems important. A number of you pointed that out as well, um, whereas we also have the uh, one-word lines in here as we go forward. Now, we could probably, if we were writing a paper, um, and I think at least one or two of you did this, um, you can take out these single line uh, excuse me, single word lines, and put them side by side and see if they help sort of create a meaning in and of themselves. And when, they, when we do that, that's a really nuanced approach to close reading. And that's what we're always trying to do, to find the most nuanced approach to close reading. The, um, I'm, I'm getting to smile because the most common question that we have uh, is about the car bomb inside of this particular poem. And so we're definitely gonna talk about that this morning as well. But uh, it's, it's that, I've been teaching this poem for a number of years, and, uh, and that's usually the question that we have. So um, let's read the poem and then we'll come back into it and see if we can talk about some of the other elements and, and open this poem up and in terms of its confusion and what it's trying to accomplish with that. So, ode to buttoning and unbuttoning my shirt. 
Um, no one knew, or at least I didn't know they knew, what the thin discs threaded here on my shirt might give me in terms of joy. This is not something to be taken lightly, the gift of buttoning one, one's shirt slowly top to bottom or bottom to top, or sometimes the buttons will be on the other side, and I am a woman that morning, slipping the glass through its slot. I tread differently that day, or some of it anyway. My conversations are different than the, bar, the car bomb slicing the air and the people in it for a quarter mile and the honeybee's legs furred with pollen mean another thing to me than on the other days which too have been drizzled in the simplest of joys in this world of spaceships and subatomic this and that. Two, maybe three times a day some days, I have the distinct pleasure of slowly untethering the one side from the other, which is like unbuckling a stack of vertebrae with delicacy for I must only use the tips of my fingers with which I will one day close my mother's eyes. This is as delicate as we can be in this life, practicing like this, giving the raft of our hands to the clumsy spider and blowing soft until she lifts her damp heft and crawls off. We practice like this, pushing the seed into the earth like this, first in the morning, then at night. We practice sliding the bones home. So <clears throat> the, the poem absolutely has uh, sentences, but they're not being marked, right? Um, when we have this break here, we have a line break here, and then this, this is not going to be taken lightly. Um, this is definitely reads like and sounds like the end of a sentence, but he's, he's also saying, but, but it's not. So we think about the sentence um, as a unit of control, okay? It tells us that it's, this is structured, this is where this belongs, this is the beginning, this is its end, and here's a complete thought that we move on. And if we think about that this is a poem about these small joys, right? Um, how one thing can lead into another. And there's another word for this in poetry that we call associative thinking. Um, and associative thinking is when we have an idea and when we follow it, it leads us to another idea. And sometimes they're related, uh, but there's also what we call associative leaps, right? So we, we, we start talking about, oh gosh, I don't know, um, something cold, and then we start talking about ice cream, and then we start talking about being in third grade, uh, right? Which maybe there's a connection between them all, but really it's the own poets, the, 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 the intelligence, the speaker, that's making these associative leaps. And so in this poem, we don't have sentences because the poet here, right, the, the speaker of our poem is making these associative leaps, going from one point to the next. So there's no, so they all, they all in a sense, move into one another as, as gratitude should, as paying attention to the small details should. They should go from one to the other. It also resembles, I think, in many ways, just the, the way that our brains work. Our brains don't have sentences necessarily. Our images that we get, our memories, um, they pop into our head one after the other, sometimes piling on one another so quickly that it can be um, overwhelming. So he's trying to overwhelm us here, trying to push us into a place, uh, a little bit of discomfort and a little bit of confusion. Um, the whole poem, of course, is, is considered to be an ode, and one of you, uh, and I think more than one, looked up this definition. It doesn't really seem to fit. Uh, it's a very specific term from, from Greek poetry and Greek, Greek drama. Um, what typically we use an ode for now in, in like the, 20, the 20th century, 21st century, is it's a kind of a song of praise, all right? An ode to, to joy would be a song of praise uh, about joy. And this is a song of praise about a very simple task, right? Buttoning and unbuttoning my shirt, which of course um, I would assume you all can do, right? Or you've all done before. And it's not that big of a deal uh, to us at all, but it does require a pretty amazing amount of dexterity um, and, and unconscious thought that, that we've turned into unconscious thought. Um, and you may know this if you've ever missed a button, right? And your shirt's all askew, you have to go back and do it again. But for instance, my son, um, 20 months old, he, no way he can button a shirt. He doesn't have the manual dexterity to do that. This is why he has to learn these things um, and to make sure that you can do this. And perhaps you even have a memory of learning how to do this. My mother always taught us to button from the bottom up as that way we wouldn't miss one. Right, so it's not just that it's some task that's menial. It's this thing we learned at one point in our lives, and we've done it so much through repetition that it no longer seems impressive that we can do this. Um, this is something that, that Thomas Carlyle will say in his in his uh, his essay called Sartre Resartus, where he talks about innumerable are the legend of main tricks of custom, uh, but by far the worst is that by repetition a thing ceases to be miraculous, and. You know, and Roski is playing with this, this idea that your dexterity of your hands, right, this, these very delicate moments that you're working with are somehow uh, less miraculous simply because you've done it before and you've done it so many times. That's not a good reason to lose the miraculous in this world. 
So we need to be paying attention to these uh, small moments of buttoning and buttoning my shirt. And there's also, of course, um, you know, this, uh, maybe it's a futile act. We take something on to take it off. It has built into this some sort of like almost a, a romantic sort of feeling to it as well. Um, it's just the, the derobing of the self in this space. And so we're dealing with a lot in this particular associative leaps, uh, confusion, how, how things go from one thing to the next and how uh, manual experience and, and, and dexterity can be incredibly important. Um, this is also why if you've uh, ever watched a television show where somebody gets a sobriety test, a field sobriety test, one of them they do is this, right? One, two, three, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Because as you, uh, as you become more and more inebriated, this act becomes increasingly more difficult, uh, which of course none of us know firsthand. <laughs> bad pun, but um, it's because as, as we become inebriated, these types of movements are increasingly more difficult. So it's not just that you, you, you're very good at this, it's that you just have a lot of practice and you're sober. Um, and as, as that becomes increasingly more difficult, so you can lose this, this skill, you can lose it very quickly. Um, so that's all moving into really hard to talk about some of these more complicated spots inside of this one. So I'll let this be the opening to the poem and then I'll make another one right after this and share it and then, and then a reading prompt. So thank you very much.